I have hired both males and females, and I am very proud to say that at Lima One Capital, every female at every position is paid exactly the same as their male counterparts. I'm a huge supporter of that. Uh, one of the things that I love about being a business owner is not only creating jobs, but also creating careers. And, you know, I go back to uh, a person named Shelly at our company. I met her when she was uh, working as a waitress, and I saw something in her. I thought she shared our core values and core confidence to make her successful at Lima One, and we hired her. And today, uh, we manage well over a billion dollars, and she heads up the largest division of our company. And I am very proud of that and very proud of the fact that at Lima One Capital, regardless of race, color, sex, uh, everyone is paid and treated equal. Minute. He said under the way he said under oath before the committee when he was under oath he went on to say that they weren't individually looked at by the attorneys as Hillary said Hillary lied when she said she sent emails to her husband uh, there's no way any one person can write thirty three thousand emails about yoga one wedding and one funeral it is impossible. Right, so this, I want to clear this up. The subpoena was directed to the Benghazi emails. And so everything that was not responsive and the Clinton campaign determined, well, by law you can determine as your own defense counsel. I, I do this my client. It doesn't time, matter why it was subpoenaed. Was she was told to preserve her email records and she and her lawyers or whoever works for her decided not to agree with the subpoena, not to right, follow so the law. I understand. The order was given to delete the emails before the subpoena was served. That is, is not my true. Understanding. That is well, not I true. I have the timeline. I have the timeline that her campaign or her lawyers said to the people at Platte River who were the servers, which I will completely admit was a terrible decision and a bad decision to use a private email server. You will never find me defending that decision, just like I don't want the president okay. now to be not even Hillary's on. team is trying to thread the needle the way you are. The bottom <laughs> line is you just heard James Comey. This is the day he exonerated her after he excoriated her and admitted lies were told and that subpoenaed records were destroyed. Look, he used the term extremely careless. He made the decision that he didn't have he didn't have a prosecution. Prosecutors do this all the time. I'll be very honest. I supported her. Uh, I liked her policies. I can understand your frustration with me and your frustration with her. No, because you're ducking well, the think... question. I asked you, did she obstruct justice when she deleted, acid washed, and busted up devices with hammers? Yes or no? <laughs> you require. You need to know the intent. Okay, like I, you need to know the intent. Now, well, 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 what other right what other intent would there be to then to obstruct an investigation and justice? If you acid wash your hard drive, beat up your devices with a hammer, and delete the emails that were subpoenaed. Maybe you don't want your personal emails to make it into the public eye. I, I don't know, but I will say Jonathan, that this is my frustration with Danielle. It, it comes is, down to intent. It is obvious she violated multiple laws here and committed felonies. And that is that that then leads to the outrage of exonerating her without investigating her. Danielle, Danielle. <laughs> It is December 13th, 2011, and I don't know how many people know this, but I'm putting it up. I'm putting it up because I am going crazy with the fact that nobody is dealing with reality. Nobody is dealing with the military. The ozone layer, okay? All these environmentalists, Bill McGibbon, and everybody talking about, oh, you know, climate change and it's man-made. 
look, I'm not a climate change denier, but I'm also not somebody who omits critical factors in the analysis. And the biggest factor is our military manipulating the weather and all the chemtrails. So the ozone layer, in the 1950s, our military was conducting atmospheric nuclear tests. They were shooting bombs, nuclear bombs, up into the ozone just to see what would happen when they exploded them. So the original creator of the ozone hole, the United States military. Four to eight percent depletion of the ozone. The military did it. Do you ever hear that on the media? Does anybody ever report that? No. Okay. In the 1970s, those who are the baby boomers will probably remember the controversy around the supersonic Concord, that Britain and France, the, those were the only countries that had it. Okay. The Concord. The controversy? It was because supersonic jets fly in the ozone layer and it would deplete the ozone. Our military flies in the ozone routinely with their supersonic jets depleting the ozone. Also, during the Vietnam War, we were already conducting weather modification. And that's why the UN passed that treaty about the environmental, uh, prohibiting the hostile use of environmental weapons. Okay, Project Skyfire, Project Storm for Fury. They were already intensifying storms. We all know about this millions of tons of pesticide sprayed to destroy their forests. Well, Agent Orange, everybody knows about that. Do you also know that they were trying to deplete the ozone layer over Vietnam? Anything, everything to win. And it is despicable that no one is reporting on this. It is now 2018, seven years later and everything is worse and the ozone layer has been only more destroyed. I'm going to read an excerpt from this book, the author, Rosalie Bertel, Planet Earth, The Latest Weapon of War. If you don't know who Rosalie Bertel is, she is no lightweight. Um, she was an environmental epidemiologist. She got a doctorate in biometrics. She worked in the field of environmental health since 1969. She was involved with founding several organizations, including the International Institute of Concern for Public Health in Toronto, Canada. She worked with the Canadian government. She worked with the U.S. government. She was a consultant with the Environmental Protection Agency. And therefore, she had access to papers and documents that the ordinary American or Canadian would not have been able to access. I say all of this because it's important for people who just want to say, oh God, she's reading from some book written by a conspiracy theorist. This was no conspiracy theorist. She worked with the United Nations. She headed the Bhopal and Chernobyl Medical Commissions. She received the Right Livelihood Award, a whole lot of awards. So what does she write in her book, Planet Earth, The Latest Weapon of War? The U.S. and Canada have been cooperating in weather modification experiments since 1958. Black Brant rockets made in Winnipeg, Manitoba have been used for many years to propel chemical release modules into the upper atmosphere. In 1983, these chemical release module releases into the ionosphere caused an aurora borealis over Churchill, Manitoba in 1989. Two Black Brant X's and Nike Orion rockets were launched, releasing barium at high altitudes and they created glowing artificial clouds, which were observed from as far away as Los Alamos, New Mexico. The Churchill Chemical Release Module Program involved various barium compounds, including barium acide, barium chlorate, barium nitrate, barium percolate, and barium peroxide. All are combustible 
and most are destructive of the ozone layer. In 1980, there was a program which involved the release of 4,400 pounds of chemicals which were dumped into the atmosphere, including 2,200 pounds of barium, 220 pounds of lithium. Lithium is a highly reactive toxic chemical that is very easily ionized by the sun's rays. This increases the density of electrons in the lower ionosphere and creates free radicals that are highly reactive and capable of causing further chemical changes. If you affect one molecule in the atmosphere, in the ionosphere, it has a ripple effect. This article was posted on Global Research April 26, 2018. The moment of truth has come. What now? Threat to life on planet Earth, ozone dying, and the deadly ultraviolet cosmic radiation. The real threat to life is the deadly ultraviolet cosmic radiation that in the meantime reaches the Earth's surface because the ozone layer can no longer stop it. The atmosphere thus no longer offers the protection for which it was created. The ozone layer is disappearing. The ozone layer has become very weak. A new study has been published in the Journal of Geography, Environment, and Earth Science International. The study was conducted by Dr. Marvin Herndon, Raymond Hosington, Mark Whiteside, entitled Deadly Ultraviolet UVC and UVB Penetration to Earth's Surface, Human and Environmental Health Implications. And that study, the authors explain that UVB radiation is a stress factor that has a negative influence on the survival and growth of organisms in marine and freshwater. Plankton is affected, as well as vegetable, as well as animal. The food base of the marine and general water inhabitants is endangered. UVB can affect the photosynthesis, growth, metabolism of the underwater world. It can disturb the coral reef communities and destroy them by coral bleaching, as well as leading to a genome instability of plants. UV radiation is also harmful on land. The trees are dying. It alters their biological and chemical environment. The toxicity of UVB radiation is well known, and it is toxic to all life. All life. The lethal effects on insects and microorganisms is also known. That's the UVC radiation. I have to say the insect population I have noticed a drastic decline. But it even leads to programmed cell death in plants. In rats, it causes cell damage. In humans, it causes far more damage than just skin damage. It causes skin cancer. So 11 years ago, NASA scientists published the first evidence that UVC and UVB was penetrating the ozone layer and reaching Earth's surface. Now Herndon confirms that. But in that study, which I'll link to below, Herndon is saying this Montreal Protocol where countries came together to repair the ozone layer by reducing the CFCs he says, we've got bigger problems than those CFCs. And what he focuses on is the toxic coal fly ash, just another toxicity that is in our atmosphere now. And it is being sprayed 
by planes, but for at least 20 years, with ever-increasing quantity and duration, the military has engaged in spraying particulate matter into the region where clouds form to manipulate and weaponize the atmosphere and weather. The aerial spraying places vast amounts of chlorine, bromine, fluorine, iodine into the atmosphere, all of which can deplete ozone. Ozone depletion is now global and is allowing deadly ultraviolet to reach ground level. Ultraviolet radiation is the most harmful and genotoxic component of the solar radiation spectrum. These devastating effects of U, V, B, and C on humans, phytoplankton, coral, insects, plants, the military may consider this collateral damage, but it is far more serious and it is threatening all life on Earth. She also mentions Rosalie Bertel's work, her study, her book, Planet Earth, The Latest Weapon of War. Bertel talks of the spraying of the nanoparticles in the atmosphere, which is otherwise referred to as solar radiation management, that it's contributed to the destruction of the ozone layer, and it continues. It continues to contribute. It continues to only increasingly destroy the ozone layer. But Bertel also talks about the radioactivity. 2,200 nuclear tests, including those with hydrogen bombs, those tests during 1958 and 1998, two-thirds of those tests were carry out, carried out by the USA, one-third by the Soviet Union. The damage caused by nuclear power plant damage, the Harrisburg, Chernobyl, Fukushima, and Fukushima, the radiation leaking from the Fukushima nuclear power plant is unstoppable, but we never hear anybody talking about that. And is responsible for the first appearance of an ozone hole over the Arctic. But we also have the nano dust of innumerable tons of uranium ammunition, depleted uranium ammunition from the nuclear industrial complex, from, from the United States using depleted uh, uranium in Iraq. But she also talks about the supersonic flights, the missile flights, the irradiation of the ionosphere with billions of watts strong artificial electromagnetic waves through the worldwide installation of ionospheric heaters, such as HARP in Alaska. They heat the ionosphere and charge it extremely, cutting it up, producing holes in it. And each time the waves pass the ozone layer. The Star War activities, the military activities from space, the work on satellites, the formation of electronic grids to monitor, control, and energetically influence the entire Earth's space. Microwaves, wireless energy transmission, mobile phone masts, and in general the earthly production of cosmic radiation such as x-rays in medicine, food, industry, and everyday life, and the normal air traffic but the spraying in the troposphere, stratosphere, with heavy metals and other toxic substances like aluminum, barium, strontium,
it's an ongoing destruction process taking place by governments, not just the United States, but governments around the world, their militaries, and we've got a mainstream media that just never investigates what the military is doing. Instead, we've got a whole lot of mysteries taking place around the world, and we have scientists there just so dumbfounded about what is taking place. It took no more than 50 years to create all of this destruction. So we are in the midst of a catastrophe. But let's talk about whether or not a candidate is going to support equal pay for women. And let's just talk about Hillary Clinton. Yeah, endlessly. The woman is so deranged and so criminal and so psychopathic and so malignantly narcissistic, it's beyond comprehension that we still have people who put this woman on a pedestal. But somehow, our law enforcement, our Congress, the White House, mainstream media, they, they can't seem to do anything except talk endlessly. It's like one sick drama now that it takes place in this United States. And how is it that Americans can listen to this endlessly without getting so incensed and outraged and demand of those who are in positions of authority that they resolve the mess. How about just resolving one mess in this country? Just resolve one thing. No, nothing ever gets resolved. But as we're talking about Comey and Mueller, Mueller and, and Trump and uh oh, Russian collusion. Life is dying on this planet. So, yes, the catastrophe has already begun. Without the ozone layer, life dies, what, in two years? What year are we in? I think this summer is going to be very, very hard. Uh, Rachel Carson was talking about the silent spring back in the 60s. She was talking about the catastrophe. It's already occurring. We're living it. We're watching. We're watching it. The decline in bird and insect populations between 40 and 70 percent has long since been noticed everywhere, as well as the coral bleaching in the oceans, the emptiness of the Pacific Ocean after Fukushima, the daily extinction of animal and plant species, not to mention, not to mention, the exponential increase in all disease, and illnesses, and syndromes. And mostly everybody just walks around like, hey, everything's just fine. Even within this community, people still have their normalcy bias. Doing nothing is not an option and would mean, in fact, to agree with the suicide of humanity and its murder of all earthly life. And so far, not present in the public discussion at all. And when in doubt, has been considered a petty doom or a conspiracy theory. This destruction on the planet. Nevertheless, there is proof that this destruction is taking place. You don't need to do any research. All you need to do is look at the sky, look at the sun, look at the trees, look at the plants, look at the absence of insects. Where are the bees? 
How many birds do you have in your area? So what are we going to do? I guess just continue to watch because we need more people who are serious, who care. Who really understands this news about the ozone layer? Who really understands this news after all the terrible ones that constantly are flooding us? Who hears them and their call? Who lets them penetrate his or her armor? Who gets scared? Whom does it tear away from his chair? Or who recognizes the brutal, even inexpressible truth that it communicates? that life on the planet is dying. And it's dying with a rapidity that is so heartbreaking and so uh, kind of leaves one I don't know. The world has already changed. There is a before and an after. No matter what we think of it, objectively, from now on, everything has a different meaning. Whatever we do or don't do, and whether we think about it or not, what is now known, namely that for the first time in history, there is proof that we humans have already endangered the planet itself. Whether we manage to save it, respectively, the life on, in, and above it, our own included or not. But one thing is clear, the taboo that surrounds the military must fall. The social movements and politicians, however, who rely on climate justice and the end of uh, civil CO2 emissions immediately have to deal with the fact that they are absorbed in a myth and the problem at stake is quite different from what they assumed. Knowingly or not, a radical rethinking will be needed. A radical rethinking for every individual on the planet. Think outside the box. Don't keep doing the same old, same old. There must be a worldwide uprising, a global movement that can no longer be disconcert and confused. The military will not stop doing what it does. And at the moment, the military is even trying to get its entire program into civilian life through so-called civil geoengineering at universities around the world, a tactic that it has already used because then it is all the more difficult to get rid of the military achievements again, again. So. It sounds unbelievable, but we must objectively achieve that. We must achieve no new radioactivity arise, uh, arising, the military stopping their supersonic flights, no more missiles fired into space, all ionospheric heater systems closed, the satellites shut down, no new ones installed, wireless power transmissions and air traffic must be largely stopped. But how many people do you know are going to give up their high-speed internet, their cell phones? It does not seem that there is even the slightest chance of getting through with at least one of these points anywhere. And yet that's what is on the agenda, whether it's going to work or not, whether we want it or not, or do we perish together? And apparently we do. Apparently we do. If you do not recognize that this technology, that the geoengineering is killing life. You'll never confront it. 
not to mention the machinations behind it, everything turns out to be completely different than we always thought it to be. There is no mistake, no doubt anymore. It's a new time. The moment of truth has come. Now it's our turn, whether we like it or not, whether prepared or not, whether capable or not, it is up to us whether earthly life comes to an end or not. In 2000, Rosalie Bertel warned us that if the ozone hole doubles, there will be no more agriculture on Earth. Now it's about to get even worse. We certainly cannot wait until nothing grows anymore before we start to do something. That's obvious, isn't it? I don't know what to say anymore. Even those who are awake. What? What do we have here? What do we have here? We have no trust. We have an awful lot of confusion. Virtually everybody's a shill. According to a whole lot of people. And it is up to the individual to work on their own self to clean up their own thinking, get clear. It is up to the individual to do the work necessary so that they can they can submit to something bigger than themselves, that they actually care about something bigger than themselves, and fight like hell for that something. But the condition of the American people, the condition of the human race, the condition of a whole lot of people here in the awake community, is incapable incapable of fighting anything. It is very hard to live this time to see all life get killed off. And to see everybody just go about their business like nothing at all is happening.